One of the best things about working in Java is how powerful its GUI extension libraries are and just how quickly we can get a program up and running that not only has functional code, but also a slick professional looking user interface to back it up and help anyone interact with our program. That's what we're going to be doing today, connecting this interface for basic username and password validation with some backend code that we're going to write that will actually check two text fields to see if they're the ones we're looking for. To start us off, we have this basic GUI with a text field where someone can put a username and a password field where someone can put a password name that will just show up as stars. The source code for this GUI is so far completely auto-generated. We haven't touched it at all yet. It's just reflecting the design decisions we've made here. Before we can start writing backend code to do our username password validation, our user is going to need a way to tell us that they've put in a username and password and they'd like it to be validated. This seems like a good job for the all-powerful button. So let's add a button to our GUI and we'll change its text to be submit. User will click it to submit their information. And now when this button is clicked, we'd like to perform some programming logic. We want to check the username and password fields. And for this video, because we're just learning and doing things simple and easily, we'll just check them against some hard coded text. The question is, how do we get from GUI to functional Java code? Generally, we're going to do this through the event-driven programming model, where the interactions that our user has with the GUI determine what Java code is executed, what back-end logic occurs. Another way to think of this is that we can set up pieces of our Java code or methods to listen for specific GUI related events to occur and then execute when they do. You'll notice that our GUI components or controls like our button have a field here under their properties called events. These are all the things that could occur in relation to our control here. In theory, we could bind each one of these events to a method in our Java source code. And when this particular event occurred, whether because of user interaction or other code we wrote, our related Java method would be called. To let users click on our button and perform some coded action, we're going to be assigning an event handler to our action performed event. If we click on this field, we get an option already. Our GUI designer is suggesting we add a handler, jbutton1 action performed. That's kind of an awful name for a method that's going to be sitting in our code. jbutton1 is pretty nondescript. jbutton1 has been chosen though because it is the variable name assigned to our jbutton when it's created in the actual Java code. If we scroll down, we'll see this actual 